Hey guys, welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 64. I'm an Igneous, and today, talking about victory, talking about success. But before we talk about either of those things, we're going to take one last stab at, at failure. In the last episode, I was talking about how we'd made some changes to the drill ship. We we're going to be using a pair of large atmospheric thrusters to kind of keep the whole thing from falling too quickly and causing problems with damage to things around it. Because of that, we had to be a little bit more careful about our fuel, keeping an eye on the fuel in the drill ship, because the drill ship is really not something that you're necessarily going to be wanting to spend a ton of time on. So it would be important to take a look at it because we'd be using so much more power. As if I needed another lesson, as I was testing the last few things with the gantry, making sure that everything worked the way I expected it to, I was uh, shown exactly what happens when the drill ship runs out of fuel right before you drop it. But that's enough of that nonsense. We've had enough of the failure. We've done enough of the failure. We've been doing failure for weeks now. All to get to this this moment here. The first thing we want to do when we're doing this little test of the um, lowering mechanism is we want to raise the chassis of the Atlas up off the ground as high as we can get it so that we create a gap between the bottom of the drill and the ice below them. And that gives us some room to maneuver without having to worry about what's going on with the stuff under the drill heads. Uh, for some reason, I ended up with a save where I'd already ground down the tab after it had been lowered. And I thought, eh, we'll do a little bit of a test to make sure that it's still welding properly. Using the merge block to reattach it and properly align it, and then the welders make quick work of things, but it kind of goes from the bottom up. And if you're in a bit of a rush, too much of a rush, you might miss the welding, <laughs> the blast door blocks that are critical to this whole mechanism and making sure that it doesn't just fall as far as it wants to fall. These cross beams that we just finished welding up are necessary to stop the whole thing from falling, to keep everything aligned and allow us to move forward. So this is a better example of how the whole thing works uh, from beginning to end. The first thing that we need to do in order to lower the drill ship is lower the track ship, which we do by releasing the merge blocks. And in this case, it was a little bit stuck on the landing gears, but we fixed that. Then we use the wheels, those wheels on suspension in the front, to align that tab that's hanging down so that it's straight up and down and up snug against the landing gears around the back of the gantry that we'll see momentarily, here we go, around the back side of the gantry. Once we lock those landing gears, we see the, that ring of light around the bottom of them turn green. That means we're ready to start grinding which we do, and in this case, as I've been doing throughout this testing process, I forgot to turn the welders off. So the grinders are trying to grind, and the welders are welding whatever the grinders start to grind until I realize what was happening, and then I think to myself, ah, turn off the welders, dumbass. And it works much better when you do it that way. So you can see we've ground out all the bits that need to be ground out, and now all that remains is to re-merge the bits and pieces, get it all properly aligned so that the, the pieces we're trying to weld to are aligned with the blueprint properly, and then we weld everything back up and we're right where we started, only the track ship now is one block lower. So we could repeat this process infinitely, theoretically, provided you have enough resources to add those extra blocks every time you drop it, one block worth, simple, almost elegant, very straightforward, not necessarily complicated to do, even if you're triggering each piece of the puzzle manually along the way, it's pretty straightforward once you got a feel for what's going on. So that's basically the gantry in a nutshell. Proof of concept, job done. Uh, it's ready to go. It's ready for service. Now it's just a case of making sure that basically everything is playing well with everything else. We've done all of the individual systems. We've tested them uh, fairly rigorously along the way. We know that things generally tend to work in the conditions in which we've tested them. And now we need to go that last step and just make sure that they work from top to bottom with one another. One of the things that I didn't realize is that there was a recent update, which guess what? Broke some things. In this case, it was uh, conveyor sorters. 
In my case, I had we'd already tested the drill ship, the thing that we're looking at now, it's sitting on the track ship. We had about 4 million kilograms of ice in its cargo container. We transferred it through the network of conveyors, starting with the connector on either end of the drill ship that meshes with the connector on the end of the track ship and then sends it up through the track ship into the Atlas and into the cargo container, which in the case of ice is then sent out to the oxygen generators, converted into hydrogen that's going to be used for fuel. So that was the process that we tested and it worked. But for some reason, after a bit of testing with this guy, even though we made a positive connection at the end of the track, like we had in previous testing, it wasn't transferring the ice. And it was, I wouldn't say it was infuriating, but it was just kind of like another problem to solve when we thought we were so close to the end. And I found out that it's because the conveyor sorter that was responsible for pulling the ice out of the drill ship and sending it to the containers in the Atlas was set to blacklist instead of whitelist. So all of the settings, all the materials that we had selected as candidates to be pulled out of the drill ship and into storage were now being rejected. We could have sent anything else through that system and it would have gone fine, but not ore or ice. We've got it fixed. Everything's fine. It's going to work. Uh, it's going to work very well. And basically, I need to come up with uh, a boat six and a half million more kilograms of ice but when you think in terms of what we get per pass on the, this ice lake we in two passes we'll call it two full passes we we came up with about 1.5 kilograms worth of ice like this thing it doesn't really look like it's doing a hell of a lot because you see the drills and you see the material but this scale is just a little bit off. Everything is so big, you don't realize that you're pulling hundreds of thousands of kilograms of material off of a single pass of this guy. It's pretty crazy. So we need about six and a half million more kilograms. And then we will be uh, probably at full hydrogen tanks and ready to go to the Mars-like planet. And we've got all kinds of stuff that we're going to be doing out there, depending on what we see when we get there. But realistically, uh, this project is... I'm calling it done. There's a few little things that I want to tweak. We're going to get some blueprints out, hopefully for the next episode, and then we'll be off to Mars. So I've, I hope you've enjoyed the build, and if you didn't follow the build, that's absolutely fine too. I hope you enjoy seeing what you see here. If you want to tune in for the next episode, if you want to be notified about that next episode, you can subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter. Links for the Twitters are in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.